Hi, I'm Andre, and this is a talk on hybrid decoding, classical quantum trade-offs for information set decoding, which is joint work with Sergi Ramos Caldera, Emanuele Bellini, Jose Ignacio Latorre, and Mark Manzano. As we all know, we are in the transition to the use of uh, post-quantum cryptography, which aims at providing data security even in the presence of quantum adversaries. But before we will arrive in the era of large-scale quantum computers, we are likely to have access to small quantum computing devices. And for these devices, even if we try to instantiate algorithms, well, which have, asymptotically speaking, a, a polynomial amount of, uh, mem of space usage only, of, of qubits uh, demand, uh, this might not be sufficient because in, in practice this still might mean uh, millions of qubits necessary to, to run the algorithm. And uh, so is, uh, is it the case for information set decoding algorithms, which are the tool in assessing the security of, uh, of code-based systems. And hence, we, we need uh, time memory trade-offs for these ISD algorithms to already leverage the, the, the availability of small quantum computing devices. So the goal of this talk is to construct hybrid algorithms which uh, work with a classical coprocessor, so a classical coprocessor, uh, then invoking a quantum algorithm, uh, where the quantum algorithm uses then less memory than, uh, than the full quantum version would, but this comes at the price at an increased time complexity. First, let us uh, cover some basics on the synonym decoding problem and uh, the information set decoding algorithms, which actually solve the synonym decoding problem. So the, the synonym decoding problem lies at the heart of uh, code-based cryptography and uh, it is defined as given a matrix H and a syndrome, which is a vector S, everything is binary, um, and an in, in integer omega, which is a weight parameter, the goal is to find a vector E of length N and weight omega, which fulfills H times E is equal to S. And weight here means non-zero uh, coordinates, since we are binary, this means the, the number of one entries in, in E. And we will compactly re represent this or illustrate this as H times E is equal to S. Now let us have a look how uh, information set decoding algorithms work. So introduced by Prange in 1962, these algorithms usually assume that they know a, a set of zeros in E. And uh, Prange's algorithm actually assumes that it knows N minus R a zero coordinates in E. So let's assume they are some, somewhere in the back and the front just for easier illustration purposes here, but they might actually distribute over the, over the whole algorithm, uh, over the whole uh, vector. And uh, uh, if we know such a set of zeros, we can uh, obviously disregard the corresponding columns of the matrix because in the matrix vector product, they are just multiplied by zero. And uh, then if we remove them, we end up with such a matrix, an R times R matrix here. Uh, which we can, which describes a linear system, and we, we can solve it via Gaussian elimination. So we can recover this uh, orange vector here, and uh, then we can uh, extend the vector again by the zeros we removed in the beginning uh, to obtain a solution to the um, synonym decoding problem if this vector is of weight omega. But this is not necessarily the case. Because we initially do not know such a set of zeros, so what we have to do is we have to guess it. And uh, if this is not this vector is not of weight omega, we have to guess a different set because this was simply a wrong set. But uh, since omega is uh, usually pretty small, it might not be a bad strategy to guess zeros. And uh, as, as written here, we then uh, guess a different set of zeros until this vector is actually of weight omega. This means we, we hit a set of zeros, which is indeed a set of zeros in, in E. And uh, then we recovered uh, the, the vector E. I don't want to speak in detail how the quantum uh, algorithm of this, um, yeah, of this procedure works or, or how, it, uh, how it is built, how the quantum circuit uh, is uh, yeah, structured. But uh, what is very important for us to have a baseline to compare our, um, our trade-offs to is uh, we need to know what's, a, what's the input to the quantum circuit. And then we will use uh, the quantum circuit more as a black box inside our, uh, our hybrid algorithms. Um, but first, uh, just to give you a, a feeling what, what uh, kind of speed up we can expect. So if we have a classical time of t here for the procedure, 
then uh, the quantum version gives us time square root of t, where we disregard polynomial factors here. So we, we don't get a, a square root improvement of the Gaussian elimination, for example, but uh, we get it on, on the number of subsets that we need to, um, uh, to, to loop through to, uh, to find one where e is completely zero. Okay, but what's, as I said, important is what's the input to the quantum circuit, and the input is um, disregarding some uh, auxiliary information, like uh, yeah, some, some uh, extra qubit, qubits we need. Uh, it is, um, the main part is the, the matrix here, the R times N uh, parity check matrix, uh, which um, the algorithm needs to operate on. But uh, we show in our work that uh, actually we can compress this initial need by uh, simply uh, transforming the matrix into systematic form. We can uh, perform uh, elementary row operations on this matrix, basically multiplying by an invertible matrix from the left here. We, of course, have to do the same transformation for, to the syndrome to, to keep uh, this identity valid here. But uh, nevertheless, if we do this, we reflect this uh, transformation and uh, the identity stays. And then we show that uh, basically A uh, suffices as input to the uh, quantum circuit. And why is this? Because if we uh, perform um, like exemplary here, a quantum uh, Prang's algorithm again, then we, uh, we, we cut off some, some zeros uh, from, from some zero columns from this matrix and uh, end up with uh, this um, R times R matrix, which has an identity in the, or shifted identity in the front, then we don't actually need to perform uh, row additions to, um, to get the identity on the first few columns of the matrix here. We simply need to swap the corresponding parts of A prime and the syndrome. So we swap these gray parts to the top uh, and including the identity to uh, obtain the identity part of the first columns. But note that to perform these swaps, we don't need the identity. So there is nothing we need to uh, keep track on uh, the, the identity columns here. We just need to hard code the uh, necessary swaps into the quantum circuit. And as we can do this, uh, we simply need this matrix A as an input to the quantum circuit, which is of size n minus r times r. So we have uh, initial need for qubits, which is of size n minus r times r, which is the baseline uh, if we now introduce our um, classical uh, quantum trade-offs. So the first uh, trade-off we introduce is based on shortening the code, the, therefore we call it shortened hybrid. Assume we know a, a set of um, uh, alpha zeros uh, in the initially, then we can simply disregard the columns, as we said before, also for, um, for Prang's algorithm. But uh, we, if, we, if we really should know such a, a set of zeros, we can actually disregard it prior to inputting it to the uh, quantum circuit. So basically we shorten the code here by alpha coordinates and uh, then we simply input this uh, remaining matrix to the, uh, to the quantum algorithm. But of course we don't know such a, a set of alpha zeros again. So what we do is we guess it, but we guess it classically. So we guess it classically uh, remove the part from the matrix and apply the quantum circuit to the remaining instance. And if this does not produce a valid solution, we return to step one because we, we guessed the wrong set of zeros initially. What this means is that this uh, green frame part here of the matrix uh, suffices as input to the quantum circuit, which is only of size n minus r minus alpha times r. But as this is um, difficult to somehow rate the performance of this trade-off based on, on this, uh, let us uh, introduce a performance measure for our hybrid algorithms. So what our algorithms do is they interpolate between the classical version of Prange, which comes at a cost of zero qubits with a time complexity of t, and uh, a quantum version of Prange's algorithm, which is using an amount of n minus r times r qubits at a time complexity of square root of t. And now we have uh, we want to interpolate between uh, these two um, endpoints, and we do this by uh, introducing a qubit reduction factor delta, saying that uh, for reducing the amount of qubits by a factor of delta, uh, the, the complexity becomes t to the small t of delta, where the small t is a function in, in delta. And note that uh, this uh, to 
um, the classical and the quantum version of Prange are actually the endpoints here. So we obtain the classical version for delta equal to zero with uh, t of delta equal to one, and the quantum version for delta equal to one, which corresponds to a full n minus r times r qubits, so there's a, a typo on the slide, and um, t of uh, delta equal to one half since we get the square root gain. And uh, yeah, now that we are equipped with uh, this knowledge, let us uh, show a, uh, a trade-off curve uh, where we plot this reduction factor uh, or, or more the, the time exponent uh, over the um, reduction factor, the reduction factor here on the x-axis. Uh, so we have different settings here, the full distance and uh, Macaulay's. We come to this in a, in a second, but first um, convince yourself that uh, we indeed hit these two endpoints. So on the x-axis, a qubit reduction factor of delta equal to 1 gives a, a time exponent of 0 0.5, which is uh, the quantum Prange. And for a qubit reduction of a uh, factor of 0, we get the time exponent equal to 1. So now we have these two settings here, full distance and Macaulay's. Um, this, they basically differentiate themselves in the rate and in the weight. So weight uh, is, as we said before, the weight, uh, the number of ones in, in E. Uh, for Macaulay's we have a slightly sub-exponential, uh, sublinear weight. And for uh, the full distance setting we have uh, uh, a linear weight. And they differentiate in the rate. What is the rate? The rate is basically the proportion between rows and columns of the matrix. Um, so with a rate of 0 0.8, we have a, um, a proportion of between rows and columns of 0 0.2, meaning we have uh, four times as many columns as we have rows. And yeah, this, this trade-off here is uh, very uh, rate sensitive, but not weight sen uh, sensitive. So it's weight insensitive. It might not look like this, but uh, we will see in, uh, in the following comparisons uh, other settings which um, with different weights but they have all uh, rate 0 0.5 and uh, in this trade-off they are not included because they all lie on top of this solid black line because this trade-off is as I said only rate sensitive uh, so for if the rate is the same the trade-off behavior is the same. So now we introduce the second trade-off, which is based on puncturing the code. So we call it punctured hybrid, and we also cover a combination of both trade-offs. And uh, yeah, so we are back with uh, our initial uh, instance in systematic form here. And we guess, uh, uh, we instead of guessing a set of alpha coordinates uh, where the vector is zero now, we disregard uh, beta coordinates of uh, a better row, rows of the matrix, sorry, and uh, yeah, so this means we puncture the code in uh, beta coordinates, and we, we disregard those also from the syndrome, obviously, and uh, then we are we obtain such a zero submatrix in the remaining uh, matrix, which we can uh, remove from the matrix and correspondingly also from from the vector e. And this, note that this reduces the weight of the remaining instance because we reduce, uh, uh, so the solution to the remaining instance is uh, everything that is not shaded on this orange, uh, orange vector. And uh, if the shaded part contains weight P, then the remaining uh, vector contains only weight omega minus P. And yeah, then the, the algorithm works uh, similar to before. So we somehow randomize the instance to uh, be able to, to uh, maybe shift more weight into this shaded area and then we puncture uh, in beta coordinates and uh, then we apply the quantum circuit uh, to the remaining instance and if this does not result uh, in a solution we start with, uh, with step one again uh, re-randomize because we probably did not permute uh, a weight of p into uh, this shaded area. Okay, the, the, there's one thing that we need to, uh, to take account here for, and that is the amount of solutions uh, that the remaining instance has, because usually all instances um, guarantee a unique solution. Unique solution means um, that this binomial coefficients n choose omega uh, over 2 to the r is smaller than 1. Why is this? Because we're searching for a vector of weight omega 
um, of length n. So there are n choose omega, many of those. And the syndrome imposes a constraint on r bits. So we want that this vector, matrix vector product is equal to a, a binary vector of length r. So the probability for this to happen is 2 to the minus r. And uh, therefore, this is the expected amount of solutions, and we're guaranteed that this is smaller than 1 in the usual case. But now we might end up with multiple solutions because we are disregarding um, coordinates of the syndrome. So we are taking away the constraint. And uh, you might just imagine in the um, extreme case where we puncture in our coordinates, there is no constraint left. Uh, but of course, there are small weight vectors left. So uh, there are obviously a lot of solutions. So we might end up in a case where we have uh, uh, multiple solutions and precisely the amount of solutions here is n minus beta because we we disregard this uh, um, this zero submatrix we reduce the code length by beta uh, the weight we reduce by p and the restriction we reduce by beta so this uh, here is uh, the amount of solutions and now we need to uh, to take this into account into in our algorithm uh, so Ah, okay, this is uh, the, the, the input to the quantum circuit. And if we take this into account uh, for, the, uh, for the algorithm, we need to apply the quantum circuit multiple times, uh, actually as many times as we have solutions, to ensure that we uh, find the solution if, if there is uh, the, so the correct solution, uh, which has also weight p in this shaded area. Um, and if no, uh, no run of the quantum circuit did produce a valid solution, where valid means it has weight p in this shaded area, uh, we, uh, yeah, we, we go back to step one. Overall, this uh, gives a, a qubit usage of n minus r times r minus beta. And yeah, again, let us uh, look how this uh, behaves in terms of qubit reduction factor and runtime exponent. In this trade-off curve here, we have now uh, multiple settings. So we have uh, the full distance, half distance, Macaulay's and bike, and HQC setting. We see that uh, full distance, half distance, and bike and HQC have all a rate of 0 0.5. So this graph shows the old trade-off as solid lines, and the, so the shortened hybrid as solid lines, and the new, the punctured hybrid as dashed lines. And we see that, uh, as I said, in the um, case of a rate of 0 0.5, uh, all the solid lines are on top of each other, so the full half distance and bike and HQC. Only the, the Macaulay's one is uh, slightly uh, below because it has a, a higher rate. And uh, now um, the settings uh, differentiate mostly uh, in rate and weight, or here mostly weight, uh, where, where bike and HQC have the smallest weight, then uh, Macaulay's half distance and then full distance. And we see that uh, basically this is also the performance of, um, of our trade-off. So bike HQC has the best performance uh, up to full distance uh, with a slight exception that half distance and Macaulay's are switched here, which uh, is because the trade-off is uh, weight sensitive and less rate sensitive, but it is still sensitive to the rate. So it's, it's, it's basically sensitive to, very sensitive to the uniqueness of the solution Meaning, the more or, or the, the uh, yeah, the more the unique the solution is, uh, the the better for this uh, trade-off. So the more uh, so how many the more coordinates we can puncture without introducing um, random random solutions, which we uh, so that we have to apply the quantum circuit multiple times, uh, the better for the trade-off. And uh, last but not least, uh, we want to, uh, to show uh, how to combine both trade-offs. So as you might expect, you can first um, permute and puncture, uh, permute, shorten and puncture the code, then apply the quantum circuit uh, uh, to, to find all the solutions. And if no valid solution is returned, you go back to step one. So basically, first uh, we uh, guess this alpha, alpha zeros again. Uh, removes the corresponding coordinates from the matrix, puncture the code in better coordinates, remove uh, the rows and from from uh, matrix and syndrome, and then uh, we hope again for for weight p in in this uh, corresponding to the zero sub matrix, and yes, then we we input 
um, this uh, green part here to the quantum circuit. And yes, the amount of solutions uh, is now um, slightly reduced to this value here. And you might interpret this uh, trade-off basically as the punctured hybrid, which is supported by shortening the code, because uh, it basically, the, as we will see in the, in the, in the um, trade-off behavior in a second, uh, we obtain exactly the punctured hybrid trade-off. But as soon as there are multiple solutions, the trade-off starts shortening to actually reduce the amount of solutions. So we see in this formula here that uh, by shortening, we can uh, get back to the case um, of a unique solution by just uh, shortening in enough uh, coordinates, so, so choosing uh, alpha big enough. And uh, in the, in the trade-off behavior, looks like this. Again, solid is uh, the last trade-off, so the punctured hybrid. Dashed is a new one. And uh, we see, for example, in the full distance case, we get an improvement over all or for all quantum reduction um, or qubit reduction factors, which is because in this setting, if you only puncture in a single coordinate, you introduce multiple solutions. So this is why we have the, um, the improvement over uh, the whole regime. And uh, for Megalese and half distance, we see that uh, it starts somewhere around uh, a qubit reduction factor of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 uh, to improve, which is exactly where we uh, punctured so much that uh, we introduce multiple solutions and then we start shortening additionally. And uh, in the bike and HQC settings, the weight is actually so low that we uh, do not uh, see the improvement here. So the improvement starts very low in uh, the regime close to zero. So the, the weight behaves the same as before, and uh, this trade-off now is uh, weight and rate sensitive, one might say. Um, so we get uh, uh, the best out of uh, both trade-offs. To conclude, uh, we have seen with trade-offs with a significant uh, runtime advantage, we still get a um, constant factor improvement in the exponent, and they are most effective for low weight, which is uh, the case for code-based systems, so especially uh, in they have a good performance in the case of code-based cryptography and they uh, interpolate uh, continuously between uh, the classical and the quantum version of uh, Prang's algorithm and strongly support the use of uh, already small um, quantum devices to obtain uh, runtime improvements. Thank you very much. The paper is online if you want to check it out.